This is part two on the build process for our new robot, Brimstone. Uh, if you missed the first part, that's last week, go ahead and go back and watch that one. Uh, at this stage, we're continuing the build. We're going to finish up the welding, going to finish assembly, and all the way up to testing that fire. Flame on. Safety first. Oh. Going to clean up a little bit across the front here to get it set for the uh, welding on that front panel. Going to be fun. I think I've put this off as far as I can, so it's time to weld this on. This is the weapon bar off of Perfect Phoenix. This one actually got bent in the fight between Perfect Phoenix and Endgame. So, um, kind of a cool little piece of BattleBot history, and it's going to get uh, going to get back on a combat robot. Uh, this will be a, a fun piece to weld. Big piece of AR500 <laughs> does not like the weld, so this will be interesting. But uh, Let's go ahead and get it welded in place. Well, welding AR-500 is not fun. It doesn't really want to weld, especially not to a different steel like chromoly. Uh, but at least it's on here and it is mounted. It's, this is certainly not the prettiest welds I've ever done, but same point in time, it's not going anywhere. It's going to stay put. So uh, that should be the last piece actually welded onto this. It, from this point, it should be just... Just assembly and getting it ready to ready to run and rock and roll. So brimstone's getting there. In case you're interested in any of the hardcore gear that the team wears, all of our items are now available on our web store, and there is a link below.
Obviously, building a flamethrower robot is something new for me. And I understand the pieces of how all of this works, but there's a difference between knowing it and then seeing it firsthand. Firsthand experience is certainly vital. So rather than stumble my way to something that works, I decided to reach out to one of my good friends and fellow builders, Jim Yee, who is the guy who built the RoboGames robot Raging Scotsman and also worked in the flamethrower system on the BattleBots robot Free Shipping. So it's a guy with a lot of experience in building really good flamethrowers. And so um, I spent a day, went to his house, talked to him for a little bit, and uh, got, some, got some feedback from him. Got, uh, got a different type of igniter than the ones that I'd purchased. Uh, got some different placement ideas of how I was going to lay out the robot. And so he was a big help. And uh, so then we got back home and assembled a flame system and did some first tests. So obviously the flame system works. We got pretty good flame ball out of it. Um, but we also encountered a few <laughs> trial run issues in doing that. Where the, the flame box meets up against the, the backside of that steel plate up front, it doesn't make a perfectly flush connection. And there's enough turbulence in that box area when the flame is coming out that I'm getting actual flame leaking back inside the robot while it's shooting flame out the front. And obviously I would prefer not to start a fire inside my robot. So I've got, I've got to address some things there. I also noticed that the, as, I, as I tore this all apart, I noticed the original tubing I bought. So I had just some, some braided vinyl tubing that I was using to go from the fuel tank to the, the uh, gas valve. Um, this was just starting to expand a little. It was like the, it really wasn't, it's strong enough to handle the pressure, but it was breaking down because of the fuel that was in it. So I went ahead and bought some uh, braided steel hose to, to use in there. And so I had to make some changes, both to fix some internal leaks and just to increase the reliability. So we ended up tearing it all back apart, all the way down. I used some high temperature caulking around the, the, the fire box itself to seal that up. Also noticed what amounted to a fairly significant issue in that I just didn't have enough space between that box and the mount for the speed controller. Now speed controllers are mounted to it's kind of a sandwich mount on an aluminum plate, and that aluminum plate was almost touching the firebox itself. And so instead of that plate pulling heat out of the speed controllers, I would actually be adding heat into them. So even though I had everything together and it worked, we had to move the speed controllers over. I had enough room, but I just needed to weld some new stuff in there to make this work. So I had to tear it all apart work on all this stuff, replace a whole bunch of different stuff, move some stuff around, and then throw it back together and test it to see if we got it all working again. The legal fuel types for combat robots is either propane or butane. Uh, it has to leave the robot as a gas. And so, like, lighter fluid and things like that, although it would work really well, isn't legal. Um, you can buy a, you know, camping fuel, which is a butane-propane mix. And this works really good for what we're after here because you get a nice, big, billowy flame ball out of it. Uh, straight propane tends to burn. It's like a dark blue type color. You don't get the big, yellowy billowy flames like you will out of this mix. So I just use camping fuel. So we got everything together. Flame works just like it's supposed to. Your robot drives just like it's supposed to. Everything is functional. I'm pretty happy with it. Happy with it just in time to get it boxed up in the crate to ship it. Ship it where?
Well, I guess you're just going to have to continue to watch and see what happens down the road and how the robot is going to get used first. Obviously, we're having a lot of fun with this. It's been a great build process all the way along. Uh, go ahead and uh, keep following because we're going to have something interesting down the road.